You can go through your entire life never really knowing who's helped you along the way, or why. When the poor handmaids built the first hospital in Mishawaka, and Sisters of the Holy Cross did the same in South Bend, it was their answer to a simple call, to comfort the hurt and sick among us. When they merged as one, they were able to do it better. And in Trinity Health, they're one with religious orders from across the nation. This is the story of intersecting lives. A local woman who earned the attention of our nation's highest office and a local man who did the same. Answering the call and the thousands of lives left better along the way. Mara grew up on an Illinois farm during the Depression. Jim on the south side of Chicago. They didn't know each other, but they did have something in common. Faith that life would get better for everyone. And the idea that everyone plays a vital role in life. About the time Jim went off to play basketball and baseball for Notre Dame, Maura was taking her first vows as a sister of the Holy Cross Order and becoming a nurse. She'd spend the next several decades caring for men, women, and children in this community who needed it most, bending, even breaking a rule or two along the way if it was the only way to help someone. There was the hospital orderly who she snuck food to every night, a poor student at Notre Dame who told her he'd be back someday to help build a cathedral for Mara. She worked in the hospital and in the poorest, often most dangerous neighborhoods in town, bringing health care door to door to the city's poorest men, women, and children. The poverty and the health conditions she witnessed haunted her. I was on the St. Joe board, and Sister Mora talked about her vision for uh, a clinic that would serve uh, the community of those who had nowhere else to turn. So when other people her age were retiring, Mora recruited volunteers and began building that cathedral in South Bend's poorest neighborhood. One of the questions was, well, where are you gonna get the money, sister? And she said, well, from you guys. And um, I don't know that anyone has ever had the guts to tell Sister Mora no, but uh, I wasn't gonna be the first. A modest health clinic in a derelict old garage the poor Notre Dame student from so many years before, he showed up like so many others and gave her a big check to help get it all going. It's a check for $5,000 for the clinic, which was my very first monies that we ever got, and he helped us a lot. But what would happen with the fearsome bikers who gathered regularly at the bar down the street? The once forgotten part of town now had something worth protecting, and the bikers would take good care of Mara and her volunteers. Well, they kind of put her uh, under their wing. They had a real sixth sense, so they knew what was happening over on our clinic without even actually coming over all of the time. And Sister and Sonny, who was the um, head of the Naptown Riders at the time, were, were, were very good. They'd go out for lunch together, and uh, they really had our back. As for Jim Gibbons, when he finished Notre Dame, he'd become a coach at his old high school on the south side of Chicago. Squeaking by on $4,000 a year, that's when Moose Krause called and told him, we've got two coaching jobs open at Notre Dame and we want you for both. And on arrival, he found out his salary was less than what he'd made on the south side of Chicago. How could he say no? Notre Dame really is a force for good in the world. For the next 43 and a half years, Jim Gibbons gave everything he had to Our Lady of the Lake. For 37 of those years, as Director of Protocol and Special Events. Don't even think, just do what Jim says, because Jim knows what to do, and he was never wrong. And even the presidents of the country 
you know, they came away, the Secret Service, the other people who were their advanced staff, and they said, gee, many Christmas, this guy knows what he's doing. He's, he was that good. It was such a natural for him, he earned the nickname Mr. Manners. And even the White House asked him to come and work for them, but nothing could tear him away from Our Lady of the Lake. When a person feels that another person is genuinely cares about them, something magical happens. Jim spread magic everywhere. When he retired, after 43 and a half years, the first thing Jim did was make 43,000 phone calls to discharged hospital patients and their families just to see how they were doing. Solely as a volunteer at St. Joseph Regional Health System, the hospital called it research. Jim, he just called it the right thing to do. As an active member of the Hospital Foundation Board of Directors, Jim Gibbons knew every single employee and every patient by name. He'd visit and pray with patients, with families, and in the hallways with staff, and proved along the way that everyone really does play a vital role in life. People were in desperate need for, for help, so I thought we just had a little place where they knew where we were and they could come and, you know, get some help. And in 1991, Maura got a call from Dr. Sandok, who told her the president wants to see you, the president of the United States. He'd heard about Mara's work on South Bend's west side and wanted to meet her. Yeah, we got to go on the Air Force One, check that out. Had a ceremony uh, where they gave her an award, and then we all got a, a tour of Air Force One. But it was a day that I'll never forget. We met the president, and then we became a point of light. I think Dr. Sandok maneuvered that. <laughs> Today, Mars Clinic has helped thousands of men, women, and children when they've needed it most. Many of them without question. All of them, because she answered the call to care. I think all of us are called to listen to the low voice within. You know you're in a great place when you can live among leaders like Jim Gibbons and Sister Maura Brannick. But the call Jim heard recently was different. A call to come home. Job well done. You can go through your entire life never really knowing who's helped you along the way or why. But if the fate of humanity depends upon the triumph of good people, it's the men and women who are willing to hear a call to care will save us from ourselves and inspire others like them to change the world. God bless you, Jim. And God bless you, Sister Maura, for hearing and living the call to care.